Hello, my name's Michael. It's really good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Here's a real blast from the past for you. This is an original 1930s container designed by Constance Spry. And in it, there's a cloud of fluffy white cow parsley. And from the garden, I've added some Viburnum opulus sterile, the snowball bush, just about coming to the end of its time at the moment. Also in there, there are some white foxgloves about to burst into flower and the seed pods of Lunaria, or probably you might know it better as Honesty. If you were in the 1930s with a very smart London home, you might have had an all-white room into which Constant Spry would place this, a white room designed by Sairi Morn, the interior designer. A flower that was very popular in the 1930s was the lupin, because the Russell lupin strain had just been developed and every gardener wanted to have them. Inside this container, I've got a mass of chicken wire, all scrunched up just to hold the stems. So to start us off today, something that's incredibly simple, just a real blast from the past. And now for something completely different. Here's a much more modern wooden container on a metal stand. And it just so happens that a long double brick spray tray just fits very neatly inside. And you can see that I've chamfered the foam along the front and the sides. For two reasons. It actually gives me a little bit more uh, surface area to work from. And also helps me to remember where the front is. The first material I'm going to put into here is some iris. This is the variegated iris. It grows in the pond. Its colouring at this time of the year is incredible. After a few weeks it will change slightly and it will go more of a, a duller green. Although I grow it in the pond it's still happy growing in in the garden. It doesn't need absolutely to have its feet in water but those large upright stems not all absolutely straight some of them slightly angled as you can see because although constant spry was a great innovator of the 1930s well i've been flower arranging for quite a long time and one of the biggest things to happen to us in recent years has been the introduction of the parallel and do you know I think there's still plenty of mileage in the parallel design. I've picked a lot of garden plant material for this. You saw cow parsley a moment ago, and here it is again. But this one, to give it its Latin name, it's Anthriscus sylvestris raven's wing, or the black-stemmed and black-leaved cow parsley. Good perennial, grows almost anywhere in the garden and that immediately gives me a very light feathery contrast with the heavier form of the of the iris leaves. More upright stems from Aconitum. These blue monk's hood flowers are great in the garden at the moment but just a word to remember that they are poisonous so after handling them please make sure that you wash your hands. Everything so far is fairly linear and upright because that's what we want, to take the eye straight up to the top. Here is Telema, Telema grandiflora. 
I've got two sorts here. I'll just sort them out. This is one that I've had in the garden for many years, Telema grandiflora. And this, as you can see, this one is aging slightly. So it's got pink tinged bells. The other one is green and my, don't we flower arrangers love a green flower. Let's just trim the ends from there, make it slightly easier to put in. These two hardy perennials even seeds itself around a little bit as well. So no problem. And then a few years ago, someone gave me this one. It's a different form slightly where the bells are really edged in red. And as I place things, if I've got them in threes, try not to put them very regularly, but unevenly spaced to give us a little more rhythm in the design. I've had this particular heuchera in the garden and heuchera and telema are related, you know, they're actually sort of plant cousins. This one is called heuchera cylindrica ivory bells. I remember when we all saw the parallel for the first time, sometimes we really didn't know quite what to make of it and it took us some time to get used to it. But now, well, I think it's part of the flower arranger's repertoire. And although we've been doing it for some considerable time, well, I think it's still got a lot of life left in it. I'm going to start adding some foliages into the base of this now. To start with, this is Physocarpus opufolius lutea, the golden Physocarpus. And because this foliage is new, look at the stem ends. Here you can see where I've actually plunged them for a count of about three seconds into boiling water where the stems are brown on the bottom. That really helps these young leaves to take up water. you possibly grow the black-leaved one. But this is the original and beautiful, beautiful plant in the garden. Great shrub. They don't really mind being cut quite hard back. I'm going to continue now with some other bits and pieces to fill in the bottom and some large leaves of begonia. And this is probably one of the loveliest. This is Begonia Tubby Andrews. Who was Tubby Andrews? Well, Tubby Andrews is the chap who found this most unusual variegated form growing in the Cotswold nursery and realised quite what a special plant it was and needed to be propagated. Nowadays, we tend to grow hookeras for their leaves, not necessarily for their flowers. And this particular one is called Stormy Seas. It's one that I've had in the garden for quite a long time. And it propagates very, very easily. And the real dark tones of these leaves bring that black stem of the cow parsley into play. This one also has attractive flowers on it as well. Another of my favourite golden leaf shrubs is this one. This is Philadelphus coronarius aureus. Rather a long name, but it's one the it's the mock orange, and this is the one with golden leaves. Now, its flowers, to be honest, are not very special, so it's not one that you're going to grow for the beautifully scented flowers, but for its leaves, it's just incredible. If you ask me my favourite variegated perennial plant, then it would have to be the leaves of this one. This is Astrantia major Sunningdale variegated. 
When it's flowers, that's where we get its common name from, Hattie's pincushion. Just as I singed, or rather boiled, the ends of the stems of, of the Pfizer carpus, I did the same with the euphorbia. This is euphorbia martinii. And a word of warning again here, you'll know that these stems exude a white milky sap, which you don't want to get anywhere near your hands or your eyes or your mouth. And at the bottom here, you can see the changing colour where I've just dipped them for a count of about three or four seconds into boiling water and then given them a really good drink. If, like me, you have a small garden, then our euphorbia are superb because from the euphorbias you will get months of colour and flower from one plant. Everything at the moment is quite linear. And here's a real change. This is allium, ornamental onions. And the number of varieties of these that are around and available at the moment, it goes up every year. So I'm cutting the stems to different heights to give me interest and spacing them out so that I've got a sort of golden ratio. Whereas the space between these two is probably about twice the space between the other two. I've cut from the garden some peonies. Aren't they just incredible? And blooming so early this year because of the glorious weather we've been having. This one is called Coral Sunset. Now it is, I know, absolutely huge. I'm just hoping that they're not out of scale with the rest of the materials in this design. But you know, if you've got a really big flower, you can do something very crafty, and that's actually putting it straight up. Its bulk appears to be less. And I've just got three of these to place in here. One of our favourite foliages as flower arrangers is the hosta. And I've got a couple of small leaved ones here, quite, quite similar. Uh, this one has a green centre, well this one has the lovely bluey grey centre. I'm just going to turn this round and use these to fill in any of the gaps that I can see. Also, just note how the bluey grey ones really do carry the colour of those irises right down into the base. If I've got a few gaps, well, I can fill that in by cutting down the stems of this euphorbia. Again, it's had the boiling water treatment, but I'm going to cut it into much shorter pieces. If you've got this in your garden, like me, it's probably come from the same place. The birds have dropped the seed along the way. But anything that is a bright, limey green just is incredible, as particularly when you're using lovely foliages and brightly coloured flowers. Now I have bought some flowers for this design. I've actually just bought one bunch of tulips. I'm really pleased that I've managed to cut everything else from my garden. And I do want these to be differing heights, so I'm going to arrange them in my hand and then cut them. So let's see where we need a little bit of orange. It's important to have some tall stems towards the outside because you do want to pull your eye to the outside of the design because the outside edges need to be just as strong 
as the bold plant material that's going into the middle. So I got these actually from the supermarket and for one reason and one reason only. At the moment, as you well know, there's nowhere else that we can actually go to get any flowers. A couple of things have been blooming really early this year and I'd just like to bring you just at the end a couple of things from the garden. This rose has been blooming now for nearly two weeks. This is apricot nectar and it's a real beauty. It's also scented. It's a hybrid tea. Also, we flower arrangers just love green flowers, don't we? So we love the telema, the euphorbia. Here's something that's rather new. My last flowers are these. Aren't they glorious? Some people think, oh, it's a hellebore. Mm, it's not. If you actually smell the cut end, it's rather like an angelica. It's a plant that was only discovered in the 1950s in Central America and it's called Mathiacella because it was discovered by a Mrs. Mathias who was a botanist and it's a hardy perennial and this one in my garden is now into its third year. It needs a hot, well-drained, sunny position. So using glorious colours from this time of the year and as much garden plant material as possible, I hope you've enjoyed this. It's lovely to see you. Thanks for joining us. And remember, stay safe and stay well. Goodbye.